Hey Floral Hokies, today we're going to do a bud base. And it's one of my favorites because it's always one of y'all's favorites. And it's something that you're going to be able to use uh, throughout life because anytime you go into a grocery store now and you just want to pick up a few flowers, you're like going to say to yourself, I know how to make a bud base. So that's what we're going to do today and I'm really excited about this. The material list for a bud base design is a bud base and water. You always work into water when you are working in base designs. You never work into a dry base and then add water later. Uh, the stems, if you work into a dry base, the stems are drying up while you're working on them. So when you add the water, you already have clogged stems. So work directly into water in any type of base design. So material list, bud vase and water. Also going to use today, leather leaf. You're familiar with that one. Myrtle, my favorite green. Well, one of my favorite greens, possibly my favorite green. Myrtle, it's a shrub. Limonium, great filler flower. Mini carnations, look how many are on that spray. And three full-size carns. For your vocab today, we're going to use a few words from Elements and Principles of Design. The elements we're going to work with today are line, pattern, and repetition. The principles we're going to be working with today are balance, proportion, and rhythm. There are six steps to making a bud base design. It's a real simple design. Step one, fill your vase with water. We've already done that. Step two is establishing your line and height. And you do that with the myrtle and your vase. You need to measure the myrtle to the vase. And in a vase design, your height of your flowers and greenery should be at least double the size of the vase. So we're going to measure that by getting the myrtle. We'll measure that by having the myrtle be one the size of the vase and where my fingers are I will move up so now what's above the vase is one the size of the vase right so I got to go back to the base of the vase and when I raise my fingers up to the edge of the vase there now the myrtle is standing to the size of the vase so it's one two that's how you dis determine the size of your greenery. So you need to clean everything off now that's going to be below the vase. You have two the size of the vase above the vase, but you still have all this stem that's going to be inside the vase and nothing should be on that stem. So we're going to clean that off. We established that the myrtle above the vase needs to be two the size of the vase and I kept my finger at the point where it was higher than the vase two times. So all this stuff below my finger needs to be cleaned off. So you just pull it off the stem. Usually, I mean look how beautiful these laterals are here, and usually we would save these to use in other designs. But today we're just going to clean them off. You clean every leaf that's going to be below the rim of the vase, every single one and you clean off your stems and throw all the extra away. We now have cleaned off the part of the stem that's going to be inside the vase. We've established the height of the design. We now need to cut the stem. These stems are a little uh, more dense and harder than the flower stems, so it is okay to use your black snips to cut these stems if, that, if you feel more comfortable than using your knife. All you need to do is find where the bottom of your leaves were, come down, and cut at an angle. You cut at an angle so when that stem sits in the bottom of the vase, it sits on the tip. Notice I don't have any greenery below the rim. No greenery inside the vase. That creates a gas that could wilt your flowers, so no greenery below the rim. In looking at this stem, I see this little real bushy area right here, 
and I want to take some of that away. This is supposed to be a very linear, uh, very thin line that we've created. So this extra weight right here in the height of the design isn't good for balance. Just going to pull a few of these extra little stems off to lighten the load. There. Now that is a lot thinner and it creates this nice long visual line without any bulk. With this, we have finished step two. Step three is to create a little bit of bulk with your leather leaf. As with your myrtle, you want to clean off the laterals that are going to be below the rim of the vase. The leather leaf is going to sit a lot lower in the design. Notice how at least still one and a half the size of the vase is above the leather leaf. The leather leaf is to create bulk and weight in the bottom of the vase to give it a sense of balance and weight, weighting it down onto the table. I'm going to measure put my fingers where I think I need to make the cut and with the leather leaf I still use my knife come in make a nice sharp angled cut I'm gonna put my leather leaf into the vase see how this creates line and this creates heaviness that's purposeful step four we'll be creating more line through repetition and pattern using our full-size carnes First thing you want to do is clean off your stems. Especially anything that's going to be below the rim of the vase. If you have any petals that don't look good, I have some here that look like they have a little bit of a disease. So I'm pulling the petals off that don't look great. Okay. I have cleaned off my stems, I've prepared my flowers. Now I want to look at the different sizes I have here of my carnations. This carnation is fully open, it's large, beautiful. I'm going to use it as the lower flower in my pattern. This carnation is medium sized. I'm going to gently push on it a little bit and help it open up but it's a little bit smaller than the first one I looked at, so it's gonna be in the middle of the three flowers. And this one is small. It hasn't opened up yet. I am going to push gently and have it open up a little bit more. See how that just kind of gave it a little more bloom? But it's still a smaller flower, so it's gonna be the top of my three carnations. The reason we do it that way is you always want the smaller heads of flowers at the top of a design and the larger heads of flowers at the bottom of any design that you make. That, the, that heaviness you want at the bottom. You don't want the heaviness at the top of a design like this because it'll just make the design look like it's going to fall over and it'll look like it's not balanced at all. So heavier flowers at the bottom, smaller flowers at the top, always in this design. I'm going to start with the smaller flower. I'm going to look at my myrtle. I'm going to look to see about three to four inches down and that's where the top of my first carnation will go. See that I lucked out here? That's about where my stem is. So I'm going to take my knife and make just a little tiny cut right there and place my carnation into the vase. So that's my first placement. It's flopping over right now and that's okay. We'll fix all of that at the end. The next placement will be the heavy flower. I will bring it about two to three inches above the rim. I visualize that right here. So I come down to the bottom of the vase, place my fingers, and that's where I know I need to make my cut. In making my cut, I noticed I didn't get all my leaves, pulling that one off. 
Now I'll place my carnation in the vase. It's best that you cut a little long instead of a little short. So if you cut a little long, you can still come in there and trim it a little bit. If you cut it too short, it's just going to sit on the rim of the vase and it, it, won't, it won't look good. It won't create this pattern that we are um, trying to create. So now the medium carnation needs to be in the center of those two. There needs to be space between the tallest one and the middle one and space between the shortest one and the middle one. And it really, ideally, is evenly spaced. Once I have established where in between these two flowers I wanna, want the middle one to go, it's time to mark where I'm going to cut the stem, make that cut, and really hope that I did it right. All right. In looking at this design now, I feel that the tallest one is a little too tall that I might have cut this medium one shorter than I wanted to. So I'm just gonna take this one out and just give it a little bit of a cut to make the space between the three of them more even. You might be a little bit frustrated because they're still flopping around and you're trying to get them to stand where you want them to stand. Still don't worry about that. That is where step five comes in. The mini carns are going to help create some stability in the design. And then if it's still not stable, you have one more filler flower to put in that helps finish everything off. I would love to be able to use this whole stem, but I can't. So I'm going to have to take a lot of these laterals off. Again, in the business of floral design, I would have saved all my myrtle laterals, all my leather leaf laterals, all of these laterals, and saved them from some other design that I could sell and make money off of. But today, I'm just going to have to take them off and put them aside, use them for something else. Maybe I'll take them home. It's always nice to have an odd number of flowers in one of these sprays versus an even number. So I'm gonna trim this to be a spray of five, right? Yeah, <laughs> had to do my math. One, two, three, four, five. Little bud in the back. Clean all my stems off. I'm now ready to place the mini carns in the vase. The purpose of the mini carns is to stabilize the design. So you don't want it high up in the linear part of the design. You want the mini carns to be in the lower part of the design, preferably right below the middle one to the rim of the vase, somewhere in there. Once you've established where that looks good, you again get the place where you want to make your cut, make your cut, and place the mini carns in the vase. At this time, you can play around a little bit with the ones that might be driving you crazy, flopping around, and see if adding the mini carns helps stabilize it just a little bit. Step six, we will add the limonium. The limonium is a filler flower, and the filler flowers are really good for, again, maybe creating some stability. Maybe your flowers are still flopping around a little bit. Maybe there's like a, a hole somewhere that just feels like it needs some more plant material. Uh, maybe you didn't create enough weight in your design, so you might want to put some limonium lower in the design. So a filler flower a lot of times is used to cover up those mistakes. You shouldn't rely on it for, for that, but really the secret of the trade is that a lot of times that's what we use it for. I have pulled off three laterals of different lengths for my design. And even on these laterals, we need to clean any excess stems that are gonna be below the rim of the vase. So that's what I'm doing right now. 
before you put your limonium in, now is a good time to step back from your design a little bit, look at it from far away, and try to decide where you might need some of that filler flower. You can arrange your flowers a little bit. This is a one-sided design, so you only need to see it from one side, which is nice because you don't have to work all the way around in this one, just one-sided. So I stepped back, I'm looking at it, and I feel that I could use a little bit of floral in the right-hand side of my design, maybe a little bit lower, and maybe a little bit right here below my tallest carnation to cover up the stem just a little bit, add some softness right in there. So that's what I'm going to try to do. Flowers don't always agree with what you want them to do. I have this nice long piece of limonium, so I'm going to use that one for that taller flower to go in front of that taller flower again. I've placed it where I think it should go. I'm putting my fingers where the cut should be, making the cut, placing the limonium where I wanted it to go. So far, so good. My second longest piece I'm going to use for the fill on the right side that I thought it needed. Again, oh, it's not long enough. So I either need to pull another piece off or see how this looks after I give it a short little cut. So I'm going to try that. I'm going to give it a short little cut, place it where I wanted it to go. If I'm happy, I'll leave it there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Now I'm going to go in and place that piece down at the very bottom. Got my third piece. Place it where I want it to go. Put my fingers where I want to make the cut. And place my last little piece of limonium. A quick recap. Step one, we put water in our vase. Step two, we established the height and the line of the design with the myrtle. Step three, we added bulk with the leather leaf. Step four, we created pattern and line and rhythm with these three carnations. Step five, we added some stability with the mini carns. And step six, we filled and covered up some of the things that just looked like something was missing with our limonium. Going over our vocabulary, from the elements of design, line. We also created line with our carnations through a pattern which also created rhythm. The whole design is balanced, which that is one of our principles of design. We created balance through making sure everything was proportionately correct to the vase. One of them that we didn't mention is scale, and that's another principle of design. Where are you going to place this? You're not going to place this on a podium up on a big stage somewhere while people are talking. It's going to get lost. Nobody's going to see it. So that would not be the proper scale. This is going to look great on a nightstand, maybe on a small table in your dining room or your living room some place focal in an entryway, something small and intimate, not big and cavernous. And that's your bud vase. Huh? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Did that make any sense at all? I think so. All right. Student. Step. <laughs> Actually didn't go in the vase. <laughs> and in proportion, and in no, not proportion. Step two, wait, that was a little too <laughs> enthusiastic. <laughs> Try again, take 130, okay. One stem of limonium, another, <laughs> one stem of leather leaf. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> hey. I'm sorry, you're probably really confused. He was probably an outdoor spider and now 
he's like, where am I?